Hello value viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. It's late July 2025 and today we're taking our first look at directed energy laser weapons. The type we're going to be looking at will be sea-based close-in weapon system or SeaWiz. We've got two Arleigh Burke Flight 3s here. All of their weapons have been disabled apart from their SeaWiz. Arleigh Burke 1 will have his one stern mounted 20mm phalanx SeaWiz, I'm sure you all know about that. And Arleigh Burke 2 will instead have a direct energy laser system on the bow here. In terms of the models we'll be using, this one here is the one we've been using successfully for several months now by Mitchell 600. I'll put the link in the video description. This is a new one from mod maker Selenia Texas. Again, I'll put the link in the video description assuming that I'm allowed to. Both are excellent quality. Mitchell's is really good, but Selenia's, I have to say, has taken it to a new level. Look how good that looks. Absolutely astonishing. In terms of what we're doing today, real simple. Two Arleigh Burke Flight 3s, all weapons disabled apart from their Sea Whiz. One uses the 20mm, one uses the laser, which is going to defend the best and any talking points along the way. And there aren't going to be many talking points from me viewers because I know very little about these direct energy lasers. I'm aware obviously the normal munition type is old, being developed in the 1960s, entering service in the 1970s, obviously relying on a Gatling gun to fire 20mm armor piercing rounds. These days in the 2020s it seems to be very much going out of fashion, being replaced by other types of weapons. And the laser type arrangement will obviously offer several advantages like having speed of light engagement. However fast traditional SeaWiz is, it's only as fast as it can throw the shells out and as accurately as it can throw the shells out. This is essentially instantaneous, also potentially lower operating costs and critically reduced collateral damage. The traditional SeaWiz, imagine how many shells are going to be ricocheting off the water and end up miles away, somewhere that no one can control. Well, this theoretically can be almost fully controlled. My understanding is, however, although that several nations are developing laser type systems like this, it's not been without trouble. I believe several American destroyers do have similar systems in. I don't think they're lasers. I think they're dazzlers or a slightly different kind of system. But my understanding is that atmospheric effects like fog, rain, smoke and whatnot can cause havoc with laser systems, as well as range limitations based on the current atmosphere, as well as the ability to moderately easily shield your missiles from weapons like this is certainly not without its challenges. Will they ever fully take over? I don't know. And let me know your thoughts on them, viewers, because I have no doubt you know a lot more about them than I do. Anyway, I'll stop yapping. We'll start with the first Ali Burke with the traditional SeaWiz. I'll turn it away from the threat because obviously its best field of fire is backwards or backwards and sideways. First, we'll fire a series of subsonic anti-ship missiles at it, see how well SeaWiz does. And if it does well, then we'll start with supersonic missiles. So let's get started. Let's start with one subsonic harpoon. Off you go. For the Flight 3 viewers, I've never understood why they removed the bow-mounted SeaWiz and went with just one SeaWiz. Does anyone know what they're thinking about that is, other than cost? Presumably it's cost. But it's, I found it always so strange having a relatively limited view uh, stern-mounted closing weapon system. Anyway, range of a system like this is going to be about 2.5 nautical miles. Let's zoom that forward. First missile coming in. 5 miles, 4 miles, 3 miles, 2 miles. Loads of wasted rounds. One down. Okay, and let's just double check his ammo. Plenty of ammo. Let's fire two. So you, sir, fire. You, sir, fire. Go. Four, three. Slow it down. One down and two down. All right, fair enough. Check ammo supply. We have 19,000 rounds. I'm not sure if that's all in one drum or if it has to be uh, kind of rearmed at different points. I've completely forgotten, viewers, so please remind me. All right, let's try three. So one. We'll do them from different ships to make them slightly more difficult to intercept because they'll be coming in at the same time. 
Good luck. Huh. I think I may have broken it, viewers. It's not firing anymore. Um, <laughs> probably best ignore that. I think I broke it. Let's try again. All right, new mission. Try again. Try not to break it this time. Right, it's working. One removed. And boom, within our mid, and it gave up. So two removed no one was uh i don't know what happened to that guy but either way only one struck the vessel either way we've got to the point where one it deals with fairly easily two it just about deals with three then i can keep running it and i'll get slightly different end results each time but probably three time on target sim simultaneous missiles going to keep getting through let's start it again and just try the um, supersonics just for the fun of it uh, so Kirov launch one of your freaking bad boys and go oof get it set up missile diving missile looking for target missile found target seven miles slow it down Frigging dice, not a single one. Again, you could run that several times, and sometimes it might take it out, and sometimes not. But generally speaking, it looks like they're going to be moderately ineffective against supersonic. Well, let's try our fancy new laser. Okay, fire one subsonic missile, please. Uh, in terms of range of our laser, we have it modeled here at 7.6 nautical miles. Again, is it a real system or a fictional system? I haven't got the foggiest viewer, so please let me know. Um, it will be in range in just a minute or so. Turned. <laughs> Little pink beam. That happened quicker than I was expecting, and there was no sound. Isn't that weird? Uh, all that power, and there's no sound. Wouldn't there be sound in real life, right? I mean, lasers... I don't know, because it's a really powerful laser, isn't it? I don't know, why not? It might be fizzing the air up. Weird, interesting. Anyway, it very easily dealt with one. Let's uh, spruce that up. You, I get the feeling this is going to be quite effective. If for no other reason, then it can fire at seven miles. Whereas SeaWiz can fire at only two miles, and it has a minimum range of half a mile or whatever it is. So only, you know, one and a half miles of actually being able to fire. Right, four harpoons coming in. Right, in range. Ed 209's looking. Zip! Does it make a bang when they explode? Zap! Seems to be perfectly accurate. It doesn't make a bang when it explodes. That's so trippy and weird. Which obviously it would do question mark or would not do question mark? I have no idea. Is it how is it actually damaging the, the missile? Is it just like melting it? I don't know. I want to say intelligent things at this point, viewers, but I got nothing I've got absolutely nothing let's just keep going it's got infinite ammo as far as I can see which presumably it would do because it's just using electricity right you know and the generators on the ship are gonna would it be able to just fire and keep firing and keep firing or does it need a massive capacitance that has to build up over time not the foggiest let me know again not an area I've ever studied because I've had absolutely no reason to right here we go that is eight coming in time on target Head 209 getting ready to spin his little gray head around zap I'm going to have to do the sound effects. I can't live without sound effects. Imagine Star Wars, if Star Wars had came out and they'd had realistic blaster sound effects, which would be nothing. I mean, how much of a weird movie would that be, viewers? Does that agree? Well, it appears that they, every flash takes one missile out right which i guess is as it would be because there is no need for any inaccuracy in a sea whiz with all the best will in the world that gun platform is vibrating about with an unpredictable amount of mechanical energy and i don't know it's a bit over my head but you know what i mean it's, it's going to be impossible to keep it perfectly accurate for all sorts of reasons this surely it's always going to be perfectly accurate am i right or 
is if it's raining or there's water in the air which is always going to be the case right because you're in the sea near the sea is that going to ref refract and bend the light slightly and cause all these problems oh it's interesting but confusing right anyway um so i'm going to do uh 16 now Lots of wonderful, wonderful talking points, Viewingtons. I am a missile. I'm going to hit this modern Flight 3 Ali Burke. Look, you don't see the laser beam from this side, do you? That's weird. You just see stuff blowing up. Presumably, you wouldn't actually see a laser beam. Presumably, the pink laser is just so you can see that it's working. I don't see any reason why you should see the laser beam, question mark? Pew! I mean, is it not just like a really amped up version of a TV remote control. Also, what wavelength are we working here, viewers? Oh, I don't know. Right, well, 16 are getting closer. They're getting to half, oh, less than a mile. One's been jammed. As good as it is, is it slowing down the way it fires? Let's have a look. Zap. No, it doesn't look to be. Zap. All right, 16, just about done. Uh, let's reset and move up. Right, I think that's six from each ship, so 24. Off you hoop. Head 209's looking. Zap. And what's all these different windows it has? What does it have different windows? And what's it guided by? Is it guided by its own sensors or is it guided by the spy or, or fire control radar? Probably its own sensors, right? Four point, uh, four and a half miles. Pew. 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 Zoom. Zoom. I think it would probably sound something like that. Although there's perfect probability of kill, there's only so many you can take out per... Oh my god, what's happening there? That was all new viewers and got through. Wow, um, <laughs> I don't know. Well, 16 almost got through, 24 easily got through. So let's say the breaking point for one directed energy laser is 20. Let's try supersonic. Use uh, one of your finest supersonic missiles, please. Thank you. Zam! So surely, viewers, all you need to do to counter the laser f threat is put a, a reflective membrane... I mean, it sounds stupid, right? But put, put a reflective membrane on the front, like a tiny piece of tin foil, that surely will just reflect the laser's energy, right? Because I remember pause when I used to... Uh, I was doing cars. There was a lot of heat in the engine bay we had to dissipate, you know, hundreds of degrees centigrade. And all we did is put thin layers of foil on objects that needed protecting. And it didn't insulate them per se, but it reflected the heat and kept the majority off it. Surely you're just going to do that, assuming that heat is the thing that's going to be doing the killing. Oh, well, that was uh, whatever the word is. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, all right. Well, let's do some more. I'm sure that's right. I'm sure it's right, viewers. If you get a laser, surely you can just re you can just bounce it off something. Right, well, it, it can uh, definitely hit supersonic missiles. That we know. All right, here we go again. Zap, 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 zap. Ed 209 being a friggin' Ed 209. So presumably, bearing in mind the PK is 100%, it's just a function of how, many, how fast the missile is going, right? Oh, they're going to get through. Boom. All right. Yeah, so it is. It's just a mathematical function. If there's 100% PK, it's just... And there's a certain fire rate of the laser, then it's just how fast the missile is travelling. So it's going to be about uh, 20 subsonic Harpoon-type missiles. And nothing else will really matter because nothing else is going to be modelled in-game in terms of what we're doing here. It's going to be about half a dozen. It's going to be about six supersonic Mark 1.5 type missiles, and if it's going to be a Mark 3 missile, well, I should have um, tried this, but I didn't. If it's going to be a Mark 3 missile from China or a uh, Russia and Onyx or something, then it's going to be about three or four. Again, it's just a basic maths function, right? 
Uh, so what do we gain from that, viewers? I didn't, must admit, I didn't expect it to be so good. Is that realistic? Well, maybe, assuming that there's no atmospheric interference, then there's no reason why the laser shouldn't be perfectly accurate every time. I remember my dad was working on the 1980s Star Wars project here to fly over to Texas um, because that's what he did for a living. He did uh, laser and satellite tracking systems. And he said that they could be extremely accurate, but they had all the same problems. They had the atmospheric uh, interruption and stuff like that. So assuming that they could beat the atmospheric problems, then it has the ability to be, to be way more better than a SeaWiz in terms of range, in terms of the not having to worry about friendly fire as long as you know how to control it properly. But the other th interesting thing is my point about surely it's like really, really easy to counter. Have I got something wrong there, viewers? Let me know your thoughts. Anyway, that's it. Um, more laser weapons, please. I hope to see you in the comments and bye bye.